everyone! Welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. I am Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner and I'm so glad you're joining me today. I have a really amazing, cute box to share with you guys today, so I'll give you guys a little sneak peek of it. Um, so this is the box we're making today and this little piece slides back and forth and I'm going to show you why that slides back and forth in just a second. But while we're waiting for people to join us, um, I just have a couple things to talk about, actually. And t this one is pretty time sensitive. This one expires today. Uh, this is the Here's to You Paper Pumpkin Kit. And today, March 10th, is the last day to subscribe for this. So if you are watching this on March 10th, um, on Wednesday, March 10th, today is the last day to subscribe for this kit. And this kit is going to contain that free gift, the free stencils, the free sponges, or the free sponge, you only get one. But it also has eight cards plus that free gift. Um, just an amazing all-around kit, and today is the last day to subscribe for it. So if you want this kit, make sure that you subscribe by the end of the day to get this kit. All right, and then finally, another time-sensitive thing. I have my um, March card crate up, and the last day to RSVP for that is Sunday. And I have, so here are the four cards, a little mailbox card. This one is a little slider card. It's so cute. Lots of fun, adorable cards using that bundle, the snail bit bundle from the mini catalog. So Sunday is the last day to RSVP for that. And the link is in the video description if you want to check out all the details on Card Crate. In the meantime, if you need to shop for any products, make sure you head to my online store. Use this house code if your order is over $50 or more. This month only, I'm giving away a free set of Stampin' Blends. So after you place your order using the host code, you can email me the color you want, and those will be bought and shipped in April. Okay, are you guys ready for the card? Or for the card? This is the box we're making today. It is so cute, and I showed you a second ago that this slid back and forth, so let me show you why this slides. So when it is closed, in the closed position, that slid all the way to the right, the box will not open. So can you see that? It won't open. It's but when you slide it over, it unlocks the little hinge there and you can open your box. Isn't that cute? And so inside is um, a Hershey's chocolate covered marshmallow egg. Perfect for Easter. Um, and then the lid closes back down. You close the small flap, you close this flap and then you can lock it back into place. And then it is stuck, it won't open. Isn't that so cool? So there's just a little locking mechanism that just will unlock it and you close it and you can lock it again and it is it is so much fun i really i love this project so much so this is what we're going to make today the slide and lock box um now i will say that this was not my original idea i saw a box like this on pinterest by a german demonstrator named nadine and i will have her project linked in my um blog post on my blog tomorrow morning so this was not my original idea i just want to make sure that i give a shout out to the original maker of this slide unlock box. Um, I wish I could take credit for it, but I, I cannot. But I did modify some measurements a little bit. Um, obviously her instructions were in German and I don't speak German, so I did modify it. And so we are gonna make my modified version. I don't know how, how big hers is. Um, so I don't even know if we're close to the same size. But to make this one, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is eight by seven. So let me get my simply scored out. We're actually going to do scoring on a few pieces of cardstock, but we're going to start with this one. So let me get my, my simply scored out and we are going to do some scoring. So I just want to make sure I'm all in camera. Okay. So let's start on the seven inch side. So on the seven inch side, we're going to score at one and a quarter from each end. So I'm going to score at one and a quarter and I'm just going to flip it all the way around and do it at one and a quarter again. Okay, now we're going to put it on the eight inch side and we're going to score at one and a quarter at three and three quarters, five and at seven and a half. All of these measurements are in the video description and they will be on my blog tomorrow. So don't worry about having to write anything down. So that is it for this piece. Now for um, the flaps, I do have some some other pieces. So let me Let's go over these pieces. So I have, this is going to be our shorter flap. And so this is two and a half by three and a quarter. And we're going to score this at one and an eighth. And then I have a piece of DSP that is the same size, three and a quarter by two and a half. And again, scored at one and an eighth. Okay. So for our second flap, we have a piece that is two and a half 
by five and three quarters, and we're gonna do that same one and an eighth inch score line. Okay, on both of those papers, and they are the exact same size with the DSP and the cardstock. And isn't this DSP gorgeous? This is from the Hydrangea Hill DSP collection. I'll get that out in just a sec, but. Okay, let me put our Simply Scored away. We are done with all of our scoring, but let me get out. Let me see, where is it? Let me see if I can find it. I don't have a lot of it left, I, but this is the Hydrangea Hill Designer Series paper, and it is gorgeous paper. It is so stunning. I've used this for a few projects or for a few classes and whatnot, but it is a stunning designer series paper set. Um, so it's in the mini catalog. I love it. All right. Let's get to some of our, to our cutting and scoring. Now these pieces you do want to kind of keep together. I'm just going to fold on those score lines and then on the DSP pieces as well. These are going to be adhered together. We're gonna to adhere them together. Um, but for the time being, we just wanna fold them together and then just kind of keep them together. So, and actually, I think we are going to, I'm gonna go back to it. We're gonna go ahead and just adhere them together now because that will give them some good time to set up. So I'm actually gonna use liquid glue for this because we wanna make sure that we cover the entire thing because we want it to stick together really well so again line up those score lines line up all the edges and we are just going to adhere this all together and we're going to do the same thing to the other piece to kind of reinforce that score line okay so we're going to do the same thing to this piece as well we're just going to adhere them together and the only reason we're adding this other layer of cardstock is because these are going to be the our lock flaps on our box. So these are, when you slide this over, these are the little flaps that lock into place. And the cardstock just gives it so much more stability. The DSP alone just isn't sturdy enough. So the cardstock gives it lots of stability. Okay, so we're gonna just let these kind of hang out and dry. And we'll come back to those in a second. Okay, in the meantime, we have our box. We have our seven by eight inch piece of paper. And we have our box, and I'm gonna fold on all of the score lines. Now the box is really simple to put together. And you can use this box without those um, little flaps. So um, it's just pretty much your standard size box. So on the on the long side we have this half inch side over here this is going to be our little um lid and this is going to this is the lid this is the little flap for the lid so what we need to do is actually cut off these two rectangles so i'm going to use my paper snips you can use um longer scissors to or even your paper cutter and i'm just going to trim those off just like that probably longer scissors would have been a better idea but that's okay all right, and now we have these three um, on each side. We have the we have the two squares and the one rectangle. So what we're going to do is notch in on the the squares, and then cut straight up on the rectangle. There we go, and there we go, and we'll do the same thing to the other side. So we're just notching in on the squares, and then we're cutting up on the rectangle. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. So we are waiting for our, the retired list to come out. The retired list will be out in just about two weeks, actually. So if you guys are waiting for that retired list, it's coming and demonstrators will get to see the brand new catalog in just about two weeks, in 13 days, actually. So if you have considered joining Stampin' Up! It is a great time because you're going to get exclusive access to that brand new catalog early. Okay, so you can see what we did here. We just cut those flaps. And now for our final step, we're just going to trim these little flaps at an, an angle. Just a very slight angle. It just adds to the, to the look of it. And that's an optional step. You can also use a corner rounder and just round those corners. All right, I'm going to grab my Stampin' Seal Plus to adhere the box together. And we are going to put adhesive on all of the squares. Okay. Right, just on all of these squares. I'm just gonna throw some adhesive on there. And so the box goes together. I'm just gonna line up, cut, line this, 
cut line with this score line and do the same thing on the on the side a little bit of adhesive hanging over that score line but that's okay just like that so that is that is the box really we're gonna do the same thing on this side so you can if you don't want to add those little flaps that's okay because you have a really cute box just like this okay so before we um you so you could call this good just like this but we are going to add our little our little flaps on but before we do that we're going to do some punching so i'm going to set those aside we have our little flaps here and to make that sliding mechanism we need to make a a slot or a little um line a little punch here line here so i'm going to use my um classic label punch and I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do it on the long side. And so I'm going to punch it. I'm going to start about half an inch from the right side and my score lines on the left. So about half an inch from the right side. I'm just going to kind of try to eyeball the center of it and I'm going to punch it. And I'm just going to go a little bit about maybe two thirds of the punch over again. And I'm just going to line that up and punch it again. Okay. So we have kind of a longer rectangle here. Now, if you didn't line it up perfectly and you have some little wonky little edges here, don't worry. Just go in with your scissors and just fix any little edges. You just want a nice little smooth line. Okay. Now, this one, you want to make sure it is fully encased in your, in your flap, in your lid. For this one, we're going to actually punch it right off so that that, um, that locking mechanism can go in and it can go out. So what I want to do though is I want to make sure that it's lining up in the exact spot. So I'm going to just kind of fold this over, hold it over, and I'm going to use a pencil and just mark where that punch needs to be. Okay. So probably doing this on the designer's two paper side was not the best idea, but so it is marked here. And all I'm going to do is take my classic label punch, just make sure that I line that up um, with those marks inside my punch. And then I'm just going to punch that down. And then we have our little our piece here. And that should overlap just like that. Perfect. Okay, now that our pieces are together, we are ready to adhere this. Okay. So we are going to just adhere these flaps to the outside of our box, just like this. Okay, so I'm going to use the liquid glue for this again, just because I want to make sure that I get a really good hold and I want to have a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to start with my right one, and that's the shorter one. And it's not going to go all the way to the bottom. There's going to be a little bit of, of a border down there. So I'm just going to kind of fold it over just to make sure that... It will fold over. I don't. I want to make sure that I'm not gluing beyond that score line. And I'm just gonna give that a press. Make sure that's all good and in place. Perfect. And we're gonna do the same thing to this side. We're gonna add some adhesive to this, and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll pull this over, and just kind of line that up. And you're gonna have about half an inch just kind of hanging off the bottom there or that little border there. Now you can always make your DSP an, an eighth of an inch longer. What did I say? Half an inch? It's like an eighth of an inch. You can make it an eighth of an inch longer if you want, if you want it to go all the way to the bottom, but I think it just adds to the, to the box there. All right. So this lid closes, flap over, flap over, and you'll see that everything is lining up just as it should be. So cute, right? Okay. We're gonna to get to all of our stamping now because that is our next step. Let me lock this back up so you can see what we're doing. So we're gonna set our box aside. It's gonna finish drying. So we are gonna do some stamping. I've already pre-die cut some of my um, pieces for my little tag here. So from the Hippo and Friends dies, um, I've die cut this little rectangle image down here. This is the second largest and then the smallest one. This is in Seaside Spray and then it's been embossed with the ornate floral embossing folder. Um, this one is, is in Gorgeous Grape. And then I've also die cut the smallest little rectangle one, the stitched rectangle one right there. And that's actually going to be the back of our 
of our locking mechanism. And with the layering circles, I've die cut this little circle. You can also just use a punch. I think this is like one and three eighths. So you could just use like a one and a half inch circle punch. And then I just have a scrap for my greeting, which is about three quarters inch tall by probably about three inches. And then just a scrap to stamp our little, our little lambs on. And we're using the Hippo and Friends or the Hippo Happiness Bundle for our little sheet too. Okay. So let's get to all of our stamping. I have a lot of ink pads here. We're going to do a lot of a lot of stamping. So let's start with our seaside spray because that's for our greeting too. I just stuck my whole thumb in my ink pad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. All right. The happy Easter greeting is from the Arranger Wreath um, stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that on my little greeting piece. Happy Easter. We'll set that aside for just a minute. And we're going to start with our little, our little lamb. He is in seaside spray as well. So I'm just going to stamp him down, just the little body part. All right, we're done with our seaside spray. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to have to clean our little lamb image because we're using him in multiple colors. So I'm going to get out my Simply Chamois. Do a little cleaning on him. And we're going to bring in our Highland Heather. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to stamp this one off because um, the Highland Heather was a little dark even after I put the gorgeous grape on top. So I'm just gonna stamp that off. That way we get a lighter Highland, Highland Heather shade and clean that one. Even though we're done with that, we're close that. Um, we're gonna bring in our gorgeous grape and we're gonna bring in the little detail piece of that lamb. And let's see, I hope I can line this up. Ooh, I probably should've got my stamp brattis out. Okay, I hope you don't get my head. Let's see how well I do. Oh, that was pretty bad. Let's try, let's try again. Oh my goodness. I hope that I can do better with the, with the Misty Moonlight. I might actually have to bring it closer to me to, so I can get right over it because I, I don't think I can, I'm not sure I can do, do it in this angle. So let me stamp that off. Let me pull it over. Okay, perfect. Look how cute he is now. All right. We are going to pull in the misty and then do that. But before we do that, we're going to finish up our greeting piece as long as the gorgeous grape ink is out. This is to you for um, happy Easter to you. Isn't that cute? You can leave that part off if you're doing, um, of course, a different animal or a different tag altogether. You can leave that part off. I thought that was really cute. Okay. Move our greeting piece out of the way. Misty Moonlight. We're going to do that detailed um, sheep image again. And I, I don't know, can I get, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pull it closer to me. Sorry guys. Let's see. Man, look at how off I am again, <laughs> even doing it. Like, I'm gonna have to get another piece of paper. Oh, it's one of those days. I will say that um, it's easier to start with the darker color. So let's do that. We'll start with our Misty Moonlight color. And then we'll go into our, our lighter color. So we'll get back out our Stampin' scrub or what do we call this? Our Simply Chamois. And we're going to get back out our Seaside Spray. Normally, you guys, I, I don't have trouble lining this up. I think it's just because there's a camera. All right. And there we go. Okay. Pretty good. He's off a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to go with it. All right. Let's bring in our little lambs. I'm going to off the ones we're not using so we're gonna be die cutting them anyway so these are our two little lambs we just need to add their faces so for that I'm gonna use my my black memento if you've hung around with me this long thanks guys I know the wheels were coming off so the little face just goes right on there and it is so cute okay you guys might hear the ice cream man driving by my house my craft room is at the front of the house, so I get all the traffic noises, and right now we currently have the ice cream man going by, so there we go. <laughs> it's okay. Here we go. We're going to pull out our little mini cut and emboss machine and pretend like I was able to stamp those like a professional. All right, we're going to pull out. Let me get those dies back out. I did not get my little sheep die ready, so we're going to pull them out. We can only cut one at a time, so... I'm going to line this up and hopefully this goes 
more according to plan than stamping, but I promise it's worth it. Now, if you're making a lot of these boxes, I might want to simplify the tag a little bit, but I think that it's, it's a really cute little tag. And I think it shows the versatility of this Hippo and Friends dies and stamp set. The whole thing is such a cute bundle and it's so versatile. Okay, so I'm going to get this all lined up. I'm going to use my post-it tape and hold it in place and then we will be ready to assemble. The hard part will be done. And here we go. The mini cut and emboss machine I think is my absolute favorite tool. I use it every day and I just love it. So if you don't have one, add one to your wish list. They're fantastic. Okay, I don't want to lose my die. I'll set it right there and move all my trash off to the side. Okay, so we have our pieces. We are ready to assemble this thing. So let's flag this little end. I'm just going to cut up the center and then go from corner to the center and trim that into a banner. You could use your banner's pick a punch or your tailor tag punch, whatever you want. We're going to use our stamp and seal plus to assemble everything. Our embossed piece goes on top of our gorgeous great piece. And then I have a bow, which I was smart enough to pre-tie from the gorgeous grape ribbon. This is from that same Hydrangea Hill Suite, and it is so, it's so yummy. I, this ribbon is fantastic. If you don't think you're a purple person, this ribbon might change your mind. It is fantastic. So just a glue dot behind there. It's all going to get kind of sealed in with dimensionals, so I'm not too worried, but kind of just left of the center. We're going to put our circle right on top of it. I'm going to use dimensionals for that, of course. So just a couple in my circle. We're just layering up our, our tag here. And I love doing 3D projects like this because you can really layer it up. And you guys, man, I am <laughs> losing it. Right, I'm going to trim that off so we can tuck this under here, and I'm going to put a dimensional behind there just to hold it up. This will go. You don't want to cover up the greeting. Just like that. So just poke it out just like that. Okay? Hope you're with me. Hope everybody is still here. And then two dimensionals, one behind each little sheep. Okay? And then we're just going to stick these guys on. And then we'll go the other. We'll put them in the opposite order this time. All right, now the ribbon, I think the tails are a little long, so I'm just gonna trim those. And we are ready to make this thing. We're ready to finish this up. We're gonna make our little locking mechan mechanism and we will be ready. Okay, let me add our little treat. So these are the little Hershey marshmallow eggs. I found them, I think these, were found, I want to say Target or Walmart. I, I don't, I've been shopping for treats everywhere and I can't honestly remember where I find some of my treats. So Target or Walmart for sure. Um, probably any grocery store has it. Okay, so we have our box. We have our two little pieces. Um, the shorter one will go on the bottom. That's our little locking one. So what we want to do is we are going to put, I'm going to use the foam adhesive um sheets for this and I'm just going to trim a piece. So um, let me see. I think we'll just trim a piece. So we just want something that is skinny enough to fit inside our classic label punch here. So you don't want it to touch the sides and it just needs to fit onto your your little rectangle stitch rectangle punch here. Okay so just like that then I'm going to peel the backing off of that and I'm going to position it into my little slot there into my punch slot and you want to do this on the longer piece you want to make sure that it's going to be secured onto there and once you get it on there and I'm just going to kind of center it on here and then we're just going to center our little label piece right on there as well just like that now this should slide back and forth now just want to close this and when you slide your your locking piece over it and are we not lined up what is going on? Yeah, there we go. There we go. It'll lock it right into place. So you just want to make sure that it clicks into place there. It is not like, grip. there it goes. Did it grip it? Why isn't it gripping it? Okay. You guys, when I made my first one, I had zero problems. 
So I'm not sure why it's not gripping at this time. <laughs> there it goes. Now it's gripped it. Let me show you on this one. This one, it's possible I made that dimensional or that little dimensional piece a little too wide. So, but it should just like slide into place and lock into place. I promise I'm making it look way harder than it actually is, but it just unlocks and just locks right up like that. And you could also put this on top too, if you wanted, I think that might work too. That works a lot better actually, because then it actually really locks it into place. But you do kind of have to fold it in to get it. So whatever way you prefer, but I, I just love this little lock box. So locked, unlocked and then you open it up. It is so much fun to play with. I sat here one day after I figured it out and just played and played and played. And now it's stuck. Why is it stuck? I think I made that, that piece too wide. So go smaller when you make yours. There it goes. Now it's locked. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys have... Anyway, I'm going to stop playing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think of this box. I think it's a little bit unique. It's it is a little kind of finicky, but I think once it comes together, I think your recipients are going to be completely impressed by your amazing engineering. So if you need to shop for any supplies, please head to my online store. Use this host code. If you are watching this on Facebook, I would love this if you shared it with your friends. It really helps me meet new people and grow my business. If you're on YouTube, please like this and give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, have a fantastic week. I will be back next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. See you then. Bye.